This section right here is the serial out section. It's driven by the iteration of a for loop, which will help to feed through and <laughs> take two. This is this section right here is for a serial out and it cycles through it an array using the iteration of the entire while loop. The iteration feeds through each array which will send out one bit at a time the uh, bullion of the minutes and the seconds which will convert it into a serial out. Here you can see our minutes and our seconds as well as the clock output. Moving onwards, to our block diagram, you can see several different aspects. This can be broken into two sections, well, mainly because these two sections do exactly the same things. It's just one is for the in and one is for the out. I'm going to go ahead and let Brandon explain some of this part. Okay, so in this section, this is where we get our uh, system date and time. For the uh, people that are coming in, it takes a um, string value and gets the uh, uh, the time, strips away the date, and gets just the uh, minutes and the seconds from the uh, system clock. And then we do a little bit of conversion on the second side to help uh, to convert it from a base 60 to a base t uh, 100. And then we add them back together so that we get a, um, a whole time or a whole number. Like if we have three minutes here and 30 seconds here on the output here, it'll be three minutes or 3.5 minutes. Um, this is our case structure, which um, drives our um, uh, array logic, um, which this case structure right here is what actually indexes our array from 0 to uh, 3 and then on the fourth case structure or fourth setting of the case structure it resets the value back to 0. Um, then it take, uh, the next portion of the code is right here it takes the, um, the array and does a conversion on it and uh, adds them all together so that we get a final average out. Um, this portion right here inside the case structure makes it so that the display out will only display when after all three values are uh, acquired. Um, this little section here takes the in time and the out time and subtracts it, leaving you with the uh, average uh, wait time for the three people in and the three people out. And then we get to this case structure, which um, does a little bit more math. It takes the um, 3.5 minutes, rounds it down to the nearest uh, whole number, which would in this case be three, takes that number, subtracts it from the original, giving us the seconds, which we then convert back to base 60, and then add the two numbers, the three minutes and 30 seconds back together, displaying our final average. Okay, then we take the seconds before they're added together and the minutes before they're added together and convert them into an 8-bit binary number, which is then um, sent to our serial out case structure. And I'm going to let Dust, uh, Dallas uh, take over from here. In this case structure, here is the final case structure. This uses all of the uh, former information that's being passed through our system and allows us to transfer it out serially. Um, we have a button right here, bullion button, feeding the case structure. This is our update button. And we're feeding it with the minutes and the seconds. This is going to go into this case structure. And as you can see when I toggle through, this is the inner case structure. It's going to change our ability for it to be on half of the time, so there's a zero and a one. And we're going to transfer information in off of uh, the one, off of the clock cycle here. So when the clock hits a zero, this is what our output will look like, and when the clock is at a one, it will appear to be the inside of this array out through bullion. So 
as the inside one is also cycled, you can see it starts out as zero. We're indexing through the array, and this is the part that's performing the serial output. So some of the challenges that we faced in this uh, project were to, uh, for the counter, the counts the number of times we press the button. Um, it works using two shift uh, registers to, um, the first one actually is the counter, the second one is counting how many times you press the button, and it does some, uh, a little bit of logic right here through this case structure to, um, to limit it so that it only counts one every uh, button press. Um, so that was one of the biggest uh, issues the, uh, that LabVIEW presented for this project. And then we used this um, to index the array, which brings up our second biggest problem, was actually indexing the array using the, um, the amount of times that we've pressed the button. Um, the way it currently works is we have three pe or three button presses and then the fourth state is a reset. It took us a while to figure out that we needed a uh, fourth re uh, fourth state as a reset due to um, a lot of complications. Um, also, this case structure resets on a negative one because without the negative one there, if we were to end, uh, reset it at zero, we would actually skip the zeros place on the case uh, structure, or the array, sorry. Um, the memory portion of this array right here also posed a pretty big issue. Um, when we first built the program, it when we indexed the array from the zero spot to the next spot down to the next spot, it would forget which numbers were entered in previously. So we had to feed back the loop all the way around it, uh, back into the case structure to feed the number back in. Um, and then the final uh, issue was the serial uh, communication out, which I'll let Dallas take over. Sorry. This portion, uh didn't really propose too many issues. It was just a matter of picking which method to use to send serial out. The method that we chose was to only output our minutes and seconds binary digit on a high and to not send anything out on a low. So as you can see, it's being driven here by this for loop, which cycles through a 16 count, which represents our number that we're being sent. It's going to be a Eight bits being sent on the ones, and then of course you got to include the zero, so that gives us 16. 16 is being divided in half, so that way we can also make it on for half the time. As you can see from this connecting here, it leaves this case structure on half the time while we're indexing through a count of 16 for the inner case structure. Like I said, this didn't propose too many problems, but it was just a matter of picking a method and sticking with it.